Good morning, everybody. How are you doing? This is amazing. You know, when I was in high school, we didn't have rappers starting off the morning. We didn't have uh, small stuffed uh, cows actually being shot at you from uh, these guns. It's pretty amazing. I wonder whether your high school is like this. Probably not, right? But it's really great to see you. I want to congratulate each of you for being invited to be part of this youth leadership seminar. It's an honor for you to be here. This is an amazing event, and uh, I think you're going to have a great time. I'm here actually to talk to you a little bit about leadership, and I want to talk about a lot of other people, but I wanted to give you a, a little message, and that's got something to do with the fact that um, some of you might actually be wondering whether you actually are a leader right now, and I wanted to give you the context of what I felt like when I was a high school junior or senior. It wasn't something that I felt at that time that I could be. Um, and I want to show you a little picture of me that shows you that I was really uh, quite a nerd when I was in high school. If you can go to the next slide, you can see a picture of me there. That's not in high school, that's actually many years later. Um, I was, I'm a molecular biologist, and for the longest time, you can see there in that light box, I'm looking at uh, a footprint of your gene. And I was, what I did for the longest time was I tried to understand how to turn genes on and off and try to understand how that might actually go wrong in people with different inherited diseases. So that was what I really focused on. That was what I wanted to be when I was in high school. And uh, it wasn't until later that other people actually planted the seed in me that, that maybe I could also be involved in leading something and encouraging other people to be leaders as well. And that's what today is all about. And so there are leaders everywhere, and every single one of you is a leader. And hopefully, uh, after today's uh, series of seminars and your conversations with each other and also with inspirational people here, you can really come out of here motivated to lead in every day of your life. So that's my primary message to you. Do not doubt yourself. Do not let anyone else question your ability to lead. Don't think that you cannot be a leader. Your high schools believe that you already are a leader because you definitely can. And no matter what field you choose, whether it's to be a physician, a judge, whether it's to be a CEO of a company, whether it's to be a member of an NFL team, in any of those different professions, you can lead and you can make the world a better place. And we believe in you. That's what today is all about. Now, if you go to different business schools around the country, around the world, they talk about different leadership styles. And there's a specific kind of leadership style that I believe in. And I hope to convince you that it's the way to lead. And it's something that's really at the core of the Anthony Munoz Foundation. And it's a kind of leadership that we call servant leadership. Now, if you go to some of the biggest corporations around the world, you might see a chief executive officer. And you might see an org chart. You might see many different layers of management, upper management, middle management, the rank and file people in the company. And that's one way to lead by saying, at the top, this is the way I want the organization to run. But that's not how I believe organizations or governments should be led. There's a different kind of leadership, which I think is really at the core of your generation, and that is servant leadership. See, the kind of leadership I was talking about where it's very hierarchical is sort of a vertical organization with the CEO at the top and a pyramid that gets bigger as you go down the org chart. But servant leadership is a different kind of leadership. If you look, listen to the story of Ben and Jerry's, if you listen to the story of uh, how some of the greatest leaders in, in states in the United States are actually leading, they subscribe to a horizontal approach to leadership, where the president or the CEO of the company, the board of trustees, actually believe that every person in the organization can be a leader, no matter what their job description may be. And what I want to do is to give you some examples of people in different levels of the organizations that are leading in the organization, and more importantly, that are leading in the city, making the communities better every day. And what better place to start than actually the namesake of this foundation, Anthony Munoz himself, a Hall of Famer, an offensive tackle for the Bengals. 
His primary job was to protect the quarterback, the receivers, and the running backs. And he was great. He was one of the best that ever played the game. But I'll argue to you, and I hope you'll agree, that his leadership on the Bengals was just part of his story. And in fact, you might be able to argue what he has done with this foundation, with bringing hundreds of students together every year, with moving the needle and transforming their, your lives, is even a greater contribution to society, a greater example of leadership. Let's, let's hear it for Anthony Munoz. By the way, he was just honored in Washington, D.C., and the President of the United States was there. It's pretty awesome. In our midst is a national leader that everybody, in fact, even the President of the United States, looks up to you. You're an inspiration. Thank you for everything that you do. But there are other different kinds of leaders as well. On the next slide, here's someone you probably never met, the lady with the white hair. You can see her with a mobile van. She's a professor and a physician at the University of Cincinnati. She's one of the first people that I actually met when I interviewed and made a decision to move from Atlanta to come to the University of Cincinnati and to call Cincinnati my home. This great city, one of the greatest cities in America, a real hometown. Now, Judith Feinberg was the founder of something called the Cincinnati Exchange Project, and she started it over a decade ago when many people didn't believe in her. And she said, you know, I could work in my laboratory, I could treat the patients that come into the hospital, but there is a problem in this city. We have a drug problem. We have heroin addicts that are dying. We have people who are dying of AIDS. I can do something about it. And some people didn't support her. Some people in the university and hospital didn't support her, but she said, I can be a leader and I can make this city better. And she actually went into the communities, encouraged those addicts to come to the hospital, gave them free needles, clean needles, so they wouldn't pass on diseases from one to another. It was very controversial. And there were some who felt that she should no longer be employed by the University of Cincinnati. But she persisted, and that is an example of servant leadership, putting your own well-being on the line for the well-being of others in your community, especially those who are least fortunate. That is an example of servant leadership, and that is what you can do if you become a doctor yourself in the future. Let that inspire you, Judith Feinberg. Another example is this, in this picture is Terrence Harrison. He just moved to the University of Cincinnati recently. He's a humble man, and when you talk to him, you'd have no idea how he leads. He's a former military sergeant who worked at a military hospital when things were very dangerous. His own life was in harm's way, but he stayed there even though he was scared to take care of veterans, current veterans, people who were actually defending the United States of America. He is not a general or anything like that, but he is a true leader. You see, he came back to the United States. He himself had a problem with coming back and becoming a civilian when he came back to Cincinnati and returned, it, returned stateside from the war zones. And I'll tell you what he did. He had real problems. There's something called post-traumatic syndrome. It's pretty scary to fight for your country, but put your own life in harm's way. But instead of letting those things uh, actually get in the way of his transition back to the United States, he decided to be a leader, just like you can. And what he decided to do is, I'm going to go back and help others like me. I'm going to go back and found a veteran center, the very first veteran center at the University of Cincinnati, so that he could make the transition for his fellow veterans back into colleges and to universities so they could start their lives again after defending this nation. That is a leader. Let's hear it for Terrence. And in this next slide, you can see somebody who might, you might think is a doctor. But no, this is a nurse. The nurses are the unsung heroes 
of our hospitals and our health system. Let's hear it for nurses in our hospitals. Now why is this nurse, Chidi Jaja, a leader? Well, this story is really, really remarkable. And this was a relatively young nurse, not a very senior nurse in the University of Cincinnati Medical Center. You see, Chidi is an immigrant like I am. He left his home in Sierra Leone 28 years ago to start a new life, and he chose your city, this region of Cincinnati, to start a new life, to start a new family. And while he was here, struggling to establish himself as a nurse, he turned on the television and he listened to the news, the same news stories that you and I watched earlier this year. And he saw that hundreds and thousands of people were dying of a new infection, the Ebola infection, something that was almost untreatable and some that actually uh, some individuals with the infection were actually coming back to the United States. And my former university, Emory University, was really at the heart of trying to cure people with Ebola infection. So why is Chidi Jaja a leader? Well, guess what? He watched what was going on. He thought about it for a minute, got on a plane, and he went to there. He went to Sierra Leone. He went there to care for the hundreds of people dying of Ebola, putting his own life in harm's way because he wanted to help his native people. He spent a whole month there caring for Ebola patients. And then, because he had exposed himself to the Ebola infection, he spent three weeks in solitary quarantine to make sure that he was safe and so that he would not actually pass on that infection to Americans. That is a hero. Let's hear it for Chidi. And to give you an example that you, and also in the near future, can be that kind of leader, let's think about the students, the recent graduates in our College of Design, Architecture, Art, and Planning, who said, through a pro program called DAP Cares, and DAP is our College of Design, Architect, Architecture, Art, and Planning. Let me focus my design work on something can, that can do something for the least fortunate in our society. And this is a tiny house that was designed by one of our graduates. And here it's in Eugene, Oregon. And these are being propagated and given to homeless people around the nation. These are just a few examples of where people at very different stages of their lives put their own well-being aside so that they could help others that were in need. You can do exactly the same thing. You see, there are over a thousand of you here. And just imagine what a thousand of you can do if you step up and become the kind of leaders that we believe that you can be. So I'm going to just end with a couple of different quotes. Some of these are from friends of mine. These are examples of how leadership can be found at any level. Leadership can be found in a janitor who takes pride in his work, and makes sure everything's clean and safe. Leadership can be found in a homemaker like your mom, who might have sacrificed her own career because she loves you and she puts you before her career. That's a leader. Let's hear it for our moms and dads to do that for you. <laughs> Leadership can be found in a taxi driver who works to become more courteous, to become one of the safest taxi drivers in this town. You see, leadership is about using your gifts to help others. It's not about you. It's about what you can do to help those in need. I think it's summarized pretty well by Anthony Munoz himself, who said, have you ever sat down and just thought about how you would like to be remembered as a person? Not just as an athlete, not just as a student, 
but how you would like to be remembered after you're gone. You ever thought about it? Take a moment and think about it. And let that be a reference point for everything that you do moving forward. The other one is actually uh, from a, a classmate of mine. He's become pretty famous. His name is David Brooks. And he wrote this book, which is a bestseller, called, called The Road to Character. He's a national pundit. He's on many of the major network television shows. But he's also an inspiration to me. And hopefully, he'll be an inspiration to you. Go out and buy that book, The Road to Character by David Brooks. David Brooks, like Anthony, asks us to consider our lives not by our resumes. He calls them resume virtues. You know, as you prepare for applying to colleges and universities, you're thinking about the things that you've done so you can put it on your common app so that hopefully you'll get accepted. That's one way to live your life. But the other way to live your life is to do things not for credit, not for your resume, but do, to do things for what we call, and he calls, eulogy virtues, for what people will remember you for after you're long gone. And if people remember you after you're long gone, in your eulogy, and even decades, even a century after it, then you have done something for others. Then you have been a servant leader. Once again, thank you so much for letting me talk to you today. You are our inspiration. You are our future. You are our leaders. Thank you very much. Keep living the dream.